Not gonna lie to you on this one. I'm, I'm absolutely not impressed at this at all. So this is a watch before you buy. So I was on a shoot with the Godox V1 and I broke the hot shoe off it. How did that happen? Like, I don't even horse my gear around the place. I am careful with my gear. I don't baby it, but I'm still careful. I was on a simple client job shooting editorials for the owners of a company. And I just needed a speed light. And I'm having to hold on to it on the camera as it was coming off. When I put it onto the camera, it felt, it felt weird. It didn't feel fully secure. Then it started to wobble and then I could see a gap emerging here at the front. And I literally had to hold it. At one stage, it actually snapped and the ribbon was still connected. So it was able to actually fire. But I had to hold on to it. And it just, you're trying to, you're trying to get the best photos out of these people who are not models. So you're trying to convey confidence and and all the rest that goes with doing these kind of photo shoots while you're like why is this breaking there are design flaws i've always felt with the hot shoe attachments for sony and it's the fact that they have these electronic attachments you see these pins they're such a weak point if you have any rain make sure you've got the hot shoe cover on or you will have problems with your camera these can bend if you have too much weight. I understand why they do it compared to what the other camera brands do, but this is such a weak point. It's such a, such a weak point. And the original one that came on this Godox V1 wasn't even metal, it was plastic. So it starts to bend, the, the pins bend really easy and it, and it starts to break. There is a simple remedy for this and it is just a replacement bottom. Now this was brought out originally to upgrade to, this, to the metal contacts but that's what I'm gonna use now to replace the entire bottom. So this is the second foot, if you wanna call it, to my Godox V1. It's only 22 euro, but it's just the hassle of it. And now I am going to be very wary as to how I use my speed lights going forward to make sure that it's not top heavy and that this doesn't happen again. Now to repair this is actually fairly easy. It's just a case of unscrewing the extremely small screws off the bottom. So you need a very small screwdriver. I had to go down to my parents' house to get this one. So all you would do is just unscrew the four screws and then lift the holder. Now normally, if this was in working order, you'd be careful not to rip the ribbon, but my ribbon is already ripped, so we don't have to worry about that. So just put that aside, grab the ribbon and lift it out of the connection. And then grab the new foot and make sure to check that it faces in the right direction. You don't want to attach it in the wrong way. And then it's just a case of just screwing the four screws back into it. And you turn the camera on and you see the speed light isn't on. I have the setting set that it should show me a black screen. And this is the test. Turn the speed light on. And there you go. The live exposure has turned off because the camera recognizes a speed light is attached to the camera. And now I can see what I'm doing. Take a photo and there we go. And I even set it to TTL to make sure that it is actually fully working. I hope you enjoyed this video. You got something from it. And just you see the, the honesty that's within my channel to help you out in furthering knowledge within photography, whether that is just, you know, promoting new products or showing the flaws in products. You know what I mean? We want to I want to keep it as honest as I can on this channel. And with that being said, if you did like it and you did enjoy it, consider liking and subscribing to my channel, ring the bell to get notified every time I post a new video and find me on all the social medias under Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later Gators.